as you see, folks, Jim does practice what he preaches. One way or another, his muskies all seem to end up back in the river. Oh, it's easy, 30. It teases. La la, bet you can't get me. It torments. Mm, you are bad money. Until finally someone loses his temper. The foxy jig just begging for trouble. Hey, I want to show you the two most exciting remote control motors ever made. This is the Minn Kota 765 power drive bow mount. You start, stop, or turn with the slightest pressure on this micro-touch foot pedal from anywhere in the boat. If you prefer your motor on the back of the boat, this is the new Minn Kota 665. Either one gives you hands-free control and a quiet power that catches fish. The nice thing about a mariner outboard is that it starts when you need it. And it lasts for years. Even decades. Which is more than you can say for some things you own. Mariner outboards. Better in the long run. Today's show has got you all revved up to hit your favorite body of water. And hey, I've got some advice for you. When the urge strikes to go fishing, don't fight it. We still got time to hit one more lake today. Let's roll it, Ricky. See you next week. that will stay afloat even after being sawed in half? I'll challenge that claim this week on Fight Back. Sunday night at 10.30 on the Kansas Television Network. Despite being wonderful companions, my subject group scored low in all coordination skills, showed poor organization, and no decision-making abilities. Unless I can bridge the gap between us, this project will be canceled. Thank you. You're welcome. Today's bowling tip brought to you by Gold Pin Fun Centers. There's a couple ways to make your bowling more economical, get more out of your practice, and also make it cheaper. Now, one way, when you go bowl, throw your first ball at the 10-pin, your second ball at the strike. This way, you get practice on both of them for the price of one. Another way to do it is possibly find out when your center where you bowl has reduced rates and bowl at that time. Be a cake collection volunteer. Call 946-1376. The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Here are the United States Open champions since 1971. A triple crown event, much coveted by all of the bowlers. He shut him out.
32 for 56 games. A likable young man. What a great, great victory. And Johnny Petraglia winning the second leg of his triple crown, one of only three to do it. And my colleague, Nelson Burton Jr. in 1978. Oh, just finishing up. What a way to go. What a fun frame that is. Joe Berardi of Brooklyn, followed by Steve Martin. They come from all parts of the country. The tenth is still secondary. Has a Marshall Holman won two United States Opens. One for David Houston from Oregon. And the great Mark Roth. Did Marshall like his second United States Open title? You bet. There's your best way. United States Open champion for the first time. Pete Weber coming this year the third man to win a triple crown this was the second part of it the United States Open and today ABC Sports presents the 1989 version of the United States Open on the professional bowlers tour from Edmond Oklahoma it's the $500,000 Seagram's Coolers US Open in our first match Tampa, Florida's Tom Kreitz looks for his fifth PBA title. He'll battle Detroit's Harry Sullins, a two-time PBA champion. That winner will face lefty Jess Stayrook of San Diego, California. In our semifinal match, it's Mike Albee of Indianapolis, and our tournament leader and non-winner will bowl one game for bowling's richest first prize, Jim Pensack of Richmond Heights, Ohio. That's our United States Open field on today's Professional Bowlers Tour telecast. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain and the waving wheat can... And as the late Gordon McRae is singing the official state song, of the Sooner State, Oklahoma. The wind is still blowing here today, believe me, as we're outside of the Boulevard Bowl where five finalists have an opportunity in the next hour and a half to bowl for $220,000. That's a pretty pleasant thought, isn't it? Here in Oklahoma, filled with history and its Indian country, uh, there are a couple of historical facts marked this week, as a matter of fact. 150 years ago, the Cherokees were moved from Georgia by President Andrew Jackson on the Trail of Tears, coming by foot all the way to Oklahoma. And just 100 years ago, the settlers came here for the land rush in 1889, and they came in wagons like this. And let me tell you, having ridden in a few of these, they're very, very uncomfortable. And that's why we all say at ABC how lucky we are that we can fly jet airplanes. Immediately following the professional bowlers tour, Wide World of Sports, a tremendous heavyweight battle of Andrew Holyfield and Michael Dokes, plus the World Cup Speed Ca Skating Finals. You'll like both of those events on Wide World. The winner today, $100,000 by check. In 1978, my colleague Nelson Burton Jr. won the U.S. Open, and I'm going inside now to Bo. And Nelson, what did you win that day? How much money? Well, thank you, Chris. I believe it was like $12,000, and that wouldn't even be in the top five in today's tournament. The U.S. Open is the richest of all professional bowling tournaments. It's also the oldest of the majors. The initial U.S. Open, called the National Match Game, was taken, taken place in 1922. Jimmy Bluen won that tournament, won $1,200. Then it became the All-Star Tournament, 1941. Johnny Kremens won that tournament. Then under the umbrella of the PBA, it became a triple crown event here on ABC. Now today, whoever wins the tournament can be put in the who's who of bowling. It's been the Carters, the Petraglias, the Hardwicks. They've won this tournament. The winner of this tournament has a leg up on board of the year and a foot inside the door of the Hall of Fame of bowling. Now let's take a look at the new breed we have in the championship round today. In the first match, 
we have Tommy Kreitz going against Harold Sullins. Two power players playing the deep inside line, a very tough match. The winner of that goes against Jess Stayrook, a lefty. Jess has been on a championship round three times. He's failed to win. He could be tough today. In the semifinal, Mike Albee. Mike Albee's won two majors. He has a hot hand this year. He's already won two tournaments. He'd like to add that $100,000 paycheck to his earnings. And finally, the Cinderella story. The number one position, powerful Jim Pensek. Jim has only cashed one check in 10 weeks. He's won less than $1,000. $100,000 could diametrically change his prize money for the whole year. Now, let's take a look at the prize money for the U.S. Open Finals. In fifth place is $15,000, fourth place $20,000, third $30,000, second, and finally that first prize of $100,000, Chris. All right. Total of $220,000 as I set outdoors. And it was no problem getting in here, and it was sort of pleasant getting out of the Oklahoma wind. Here we go with our first match. We have Tom Kreitz, Tampa, Florida, 27 years old. He has won four PBA titles, one of the right-handers today. And his opponent will be Harry Sullins, guy with a rocket shot who's won two PBA titles. Now the six-foot, 170-pound Tom Kreitz. So the standing room only crowd at the Boulevard Bowl for the United States Open enjoyed that pocket hit. Now we're going to uh, see Harry Sullins for the first time. He's from Sterling Heights, Michigan. His sixth television appearance. Way to the left of center on the approach. So now Bo, he can shoot. The two pin. Chris Spears, ultra important in this year's U.S. Open. It's the most demanding lane condition that we have seen all year long. And Harry Sullins keeps the ball wide with that four step delivery. He gets a fairly easy spare as you see his high follow through and powers type delivery. But once again, spares are the key to winning today. You can't beat yourself with open frames. So two frames, two marks. Sullins. Uh, and Kreitz, the winner of this match, will go against left-hander Je Jess Stayrook, to be followed by Mike Albee, and then our tournament leader, a most interesting situation for the 29-year-old from Richmond Heights, Ohio, Jim Pensack, a non-winner. That one just sliding by and leaving the one 2 four. Chris Harold Sullen's a little apprehensive at the beginning, but we've seen a lot of that to, and during the tournament. You really can't attack the head pin because if you do, you run up, get a split, and there are really no free strikes uh, in the U.S. Open this year. All right. Let's see if Harry can cover these three. So it's Tom Kreitz. That has a three pin lead and can increase it to 13 with a strike coming up now. We had a youngster that uh, you probably heard in the background crying a bit. <laughs> we have a pin stuck in the pit. Corrected now. Tom Kreitz, uh, who loves this deep inside line, it's made for his arm swing. He takes the ball inside and follow throughs out to the right. A deliberate player, awfully tough. And after a perfect first frame, he's faced now with this three, six, seven, ten. What do we do here? Chris, he has to get the ball to the right of the three pin, get it over in this area, drive that three pin over into the seven, and make sure he also takes out the ten. As I said before, it's very punitive to hit up high on these U.S. Open lane conditions. And so the open frame for Tom Kreitz causes him to trail now by 11 pins. Pressure is on today. You must remember that they're going for the biggest pot in all of bowling. They're standing, Chris, approximately what we call the uh, 30th to 35th board on the approach, which is almost in the left channel, starting the ball down the middle. Very demanding lane condition. Tom this time not finding his mark at all, leaving the 3-6-10. 
in all honesty, I think that we're going to see this all day. It's going to take a, a really superhuman effort to stay composed out there. Make your spares, make the good shots, and play within yourself. Uh, in all the years that I've bowled on a professional bowlers tour, I've never seen a championship quite as demanding as this one. First time the U.S. Open has been uh, contested here at Boulevard Bowl, but um, Richard Altman, the proprietor, very successful one, has had other PBA events here. And they were set up on a regular summer tour basis, uh, Chris, and Richard tells me the scores were approximately 18 pins a game lower in this U.S. Open compared to the summer event he has, and he's very satisfied with that. So leaving a 4-7 on the right lane, Harry Sullins. Sullins drifting high, three pounds, six, seven, and eight ounce pins this week. Barely breaks down the 4-7-10 split. Usually a fairly easy spare for the 4-7. As you see Harold with those completely different colored shoes, he just likes to be fancy. We asked Harry Sullins earlier, what would it mean winning the U.S. Open today? Well, today the first thing is to win the title, of course. It is a major, but one extra thing is I'm the man on the bubble, number 52 for the Firestone. I'd like to stay in. Uh, whatever money it's worth, everybody's on the show. We all have a chance for it, but I still have to win four games. Just out here to do my best and win another one. Spare up. All right, and for Harry Sullins of Sterling Heights, Michigan, his first strike through four frames, and he has a nine pin lead. We'll be back. Don Carter on the Seagram's Coolers U.S. Open. The Seagram's U.S. Open is the greatest bowling tournament in the world, in my opinion. If Seagram's was around when I won my first U.S. Open, it would have made my life much better because the publicity and all the press and the prestige, which we didn't have then. It was more of a hobby, and uh, you didn't win much money. But the important thing, the prestige would have been so much greater had the Seagram's Coolers been involved. Seagram's Coolers. This is where the fun starts. Wherever wheels are rolling, no matter what the load, the name that's known is Firestone. Folks vacation wherever crops are grown. The name that's known is Firestone. Where the rubber meets the road. Getting through college can be a pretty tough climb. To succeed, you need money. And you need the right abilities. You can find them both in the Army. If you qualify, you could earn more than $25,000 with the GI Bill and the Army College Fund. And you could develop the confidence, judgment, and self-discipline it takes to make it to the top in college and beyond. The championship pair, 27-28 here at Boulevard Boyle. Here's the oiling pattern we see this week. 25 feet of heavy oil. That's a little bit farther than normal. Then it's down to 45 feet, a little lighter than dry back here in the back end. Another thing, the PBA has put oil on the outside. You can't swing the ball out here. It'll go in the channel. Now, here's the lines the lefties are playing. They're playing down the center, almost on the right side, the break in. The righties are coming from the opposite side, going out around the third arrow into the 1-3 pocket. The most demanding condition, Chris, that I've seen in 10 years. And I can tell the pressure that's applied here today on the five finalists is, is into the capacity crowd as well. I don't think I've had or ever heard, well, have not, that nothing but strict obedience. This crowd is so quiet. Very knowledgeable, and they uh, kind of empathize with the tension the players are going through. Crossing over, and uh, that was a fourth frame shot for Tom Kreitz of Tampa, Florida. Tom Kreitz with a four-step delivery. Watch this arm swing on the back. He's up at the top. Now watch him swing inside out. He drops in towards the left leg. See that follow-through go completely to the right. That's a sign of an excellent inside player. Tommy Kreitz is that. He just needs a little extra speed today to hold the ball online. 
You know, when you come to the Oklahoma City area, one of the stops you must make is the Cowboy Hall of Fame, where the Western movie stars are saluted with the Hall of Fame, the Rodeo Cowboys, and of course, works of art from the great Western artists like Remington, Russell, Farney, Bierstadt. In fact, throughout our telecast today, as we go into commercials, we'll be showing you uh, extraordinary examples, visual examples of what the West must have been like. And that's what Tom Price would like to see more of. Open with a strike, then had a disastrous open frame in the second to lose his lead. Still leads, or trails by 10. This man leads Harry Sullins. The tension of each match is shown in not only the score, but the tentative arm swings and the lack of aggression. As you see the grip of Harry Sullins, a stretched full grip. He just barely has the tips of his fingers in there, cocks that wrist under there, and really uncorks the big shot. Leaving a 5-8 on the right lane. No different than narrow fairways in a major golf tournament, Chris. When you send it wide, as Harry did on that particular shot, even though you get all the lift, it doesn't come back. He slides by, leaving the 5 and 8 a fairly easy spare. Under normal conditions, that ball would have come back, got a wall shot strike, he'd have had a double, and is on his way. Mm -hmm. Well, in the starting field of 240, there were 96 league bowlers. None made it into the cut. And I can see why after watching play on this championship pair. Well, the, Chris, you're right. The professionalism of the rip pros came out. The 96 league players averaged 182 combined this week. The PBA pros, a little over 201, a 19-pin difference between the league players and the pros at this level. Really demanding. Here's the shot of Sullins. Look at that deep inside line. This tournament is the baby, the brainchild of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America. 3,800 bowling proprietor members. And it's been embraced by Seagram's Coolers for the last three years. And that's why the prize money is up to a half a million. Now, Chris, the uh, golf tournament tomorrow is uh, obviously a great. Sebi's up there again. He's uh, always very tough in that tournament, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to watching that one. I haven't seen any golf in a while, and very good tournament. It's the last test before the Masters at Augusta, which is next week. $800,000 prize fund here at the Seagram's U.S. Open. We have a $500,000 prize fund. Now, Tommy Kreitz can even the match with a strike. And then is tapped with the 10, and he gives a look up here like, I can't believe it. Well, it's amazing that Kreitz would leave a 10-pin uh, with his medium speed. That's what he does best, is really carry a high percentage of pocket hits. He wanted that one to even the match, and once again, the 10-pin normally a routine spare, but with the last 10 boards in the lane oiled very heavily, you have to be perfectly accurate uh -oh. to cover it. See this? And there's the second open frame. That's what has made this U.S. Open so difficult, Chris. Remember the oil pattern we showed on 27, 28. And of course, Tom looking for this major, we asked him what it would mean by winning the Open today. Well, Bo, the major title is definitely uh, significant. We're, it would be my second major title, and uh, I'm exempt for the Firestone for at least four more years, and it'd be nice to have a, a pop at the Triple Crown. and. The $100,000 uh, first place uh, can make a good year in just one week. Okay, Tom Kreitz, who left the seven pin on the left lane. Once again, that oil pattern I showed you is a little bit longer. There's a less break at the back end, the last 15 feet, so the ball doesn't have quite as much impetus. And then once again, the last 10 boards on the left and right are almost out of play. The ball gets over there, there's just a ton of oil. And if you don't have those spares made within 15 feet of the pin, you're going to miss them. Here in Oklahoma City, as we mentioned, the Cowboy Hall of Fame. And we're here for the finals of the Seagram's Coolers United States Open. Frederick Remington, one of the great artists. Here's coming through the rye, one of the original casts, and then outside 
twice life size. That's the way you're greeted when you come to the Hall of Fame. What makes a Whopper a Whopper? It's the bounce of the bun, the bulk of the beef, the flame and the heat it boils on. It's ketchup and pickles and onion and mayo, cheese, fresh lettuce and ripe tomato. It's grillers and cookers and builders and choppers and slicers and servers and baggers and boxers. It's proportion and dimension. It's your way and then some. It's the size of the grin when you first bite in. It's beyond any burger. Doesn't taste like any burger because it's not just a burger. It's a Whopper. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it. With Son of a Gun, protect it from STP. If your dash looks dull, shoot it. Your seats are shot, shoot them. Your tires look flat, heck, shoot them too. Don't leave your roof a wreck. Give it some luster. Give your car high caliber protection. With Son of a Gun from STP. Son of a Gun, what a difference. We're back again because we're running way behind schedule. Slow play and a lot of spares. Three, six, nine, ten in the seventh, which he covered. And in the eighth frame, gets the same thing. Chris, a very difficult spare. The three, six, nine, ten. Even on ordinary conditions, where you can hook the ball in from the right channel behind the three, six, and carry out the nine. Right now, it's even more demanding. If he leaves the ball to the left, he'll hook to the left of the three pin possibly chop it. If he sends it wide, it may not take the break at the last 10 feet and leave the nine pin. He made it perfect in the seventh. He needs to make it again to maintain that 18 pin lead. All right, two in a row. That's really shooting spares here at the United States Open. And 18 pins separate Harry from Tom Kreitz. Harry in the lead. Now Tom. Tom has not gotten a strike here on the right-hand lane, and this is the lane he'll play on in the 10th frame if the match is close. You heard him mention in the, the sound bite or the answer to the question that he was shooting for a second major. He won the 1986 PBA National Championship. From the overhead camera, look at the deep inside line. He's almost sliding in the left channel, starting the ball approximately the 35th board. There's only 39 boards on a bowling lane. Goes between the fourth and fifth arrows, which really cuts down the angle to the pocket. And unbelievable, the line. Now here he's standing way over here. He'll, sl he'll slide over to the left and play the ball between the third and fourth arrows. Leaving a 4-7. More body English being used here today because of the tough conditions. Trying to help the ball get them all. And Chris, he's been around the pocket the last five shots. He left a 10-pin in the fourth frame, strike in the fifth, 10-pin in the sixth, seven-pin in the seventh, strike in the eighth, and then once again as he comes up in the ninth, a 4-7. Shows you how demanding and what a premium there is on the solid hit. So it's a spare in the ninth frame for Tom Kreitz. Now coming up with a spare working in the ninth, Harry Sullins. Called the legend back in the Detroit area. Bowler of the year in that area, winner of regional titles. Harry with a chance to nail down this match with a couple of strikes here in the ninth and tenth frames. Leads by 18. Can't afford an open. There are four children in Harry's family. His father, father has passed away, but his mother, Rose, bowls in three leagues each week. I'm sure back in Sterling Heights, she's watching. Harry, very important to make this spare. It looks like nobody can throw strikes and come from behind, so you don't want to give it to your opponent by missing the spares. Now for Harry, Harry Sullins, he looks at the scoreboard over the left side. All he needs to do is fill 16 pins in the 10th frame. That means complete his game to a 184 pace, and that would shut out Tom Kreitz. The best Kreitz can do is 183. 
And when you need a mark, even on demanding conditions like this, the best place to go is to the 1-3 Procket. There is no safe area. You'll leave yourself a tough spare and open the door. Thank you, Looked like it was going to slide by powerful enough to get them all. A dejected Tommy Kreitz knows that the it is written in stone now. Harry Sullins just needs six pins on two balls. Tommy uh, almost unemotional, except if you look in his eyes, there's a, a little glint of a opportunity passed. Harry Sullins will go on to meet Jess Stayrook. Okay, so Tom Kreitz is going to have to be content with 12 or make it uh, $15,000 for finishing fifth, whereas Harry Sullins moves on. For hanging in, for hanging tough, for holding on when the going's rough, for the smile that's part of you, that extra mile for coming through this month for you. Beachwood aged with a taste so crisp and clean, so refreshing, it's the king of beers. This fun, this fun, this fun's for you. This part doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. Book says it fits. At Big A, we supply the pros, so we have to know what we're talking about. And our parts have to be pro quality. It's one more way. We earn the A every day. Have you ever seen those commercials where one battery outlasts the others? We'd just like you to know Energizer batteries were never invited to their playoffs. A word to the wise. Energize. Gorbachev in Cuba. Peter Jennings, the anchor with the most foreign experience, reports all the events from Havana on ABC's World News Tonight, Monday. Being cool, you'll find. Hi, guys. Nice legs. A refreshing <laughs> attitude. Come on, shortcuts. Get hot. Cool is all you got. Doing it country cool. Visit the Pro Edge team, your AMF representatives, during the American Bowling Congress Nationals at the Century 2 Expo Hall. Tom Lash Lasco, a 15-year touring professional, currently the testing consultant for the AMF staff of champions, and his team will provide you with the latest in high-tech services, complimentary grip evaluation and track analysis, static dynamic balance layouts, precision fitting, custom drilling, plus the complete line of AMF products. Keep the edge with Pro Edge. The difference is caring. Marty Matthews, Cake News. The Professional Bowlers Tour. Brought to you by Seagram's Coolers. This is where the fun starts. By Burger King, where we do it like you do it. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. This is a live shot of all the machinery that it takes. And all the 3,800 bowling establishments, members of the BPAA. Our first game has ended. Sullins winning at 192 to Tom Kreitz 172. Five strikes for Sullins, four for Kreitz with two opens. Let's take a look at the Budweiser Kingpin standings coming into this tournament. Mike Albee is in first place. Budweiser sponsoring a $50,000 point list competition, which will run through the winter and spring tours. Players finishing among the top 24 will be awarded points, and each tournament leader receives 10 bonus points. So 125 plus the bonus points to the victor here today. The more important is the U.S. Open title and the $100,000 that goes to the winner, live from Edmond, Oklahoma. Third TV appearance for Jess Stayrook of San Diego. All three this year, his best finish was fourth at the Showboat Invitational. And Bo, he was fifth a couple of weeks ago in North Olmstead, Ohio. Yeah, Chris, in that particular match, he lost 258 to 251. If he can bowl either of those scores today, I guarantee he'll win the match. 
One of the two left-handers in the field, the other being Mike Albee, who will meet the winner of this match, Jess Stayrook. Now, Harry Sullins, if you just joined us from Sterling Heights, Michigan, who won his match over Tom Kreitz to begin our telecast, 198 to 172. The shades are glistening. Seven pin. Harry looked a little better on that particular shot, but he still has not loosened up as any of you have ever bowled or played any sports when the conditions are so demanding, you never can really let up because the condition will come up and bite you. And that particular shot, he kept it in play, made his spares, and he has to go with the game plan that won the first match for him. Keep the ball in play, get fewer opens than your opponent. So stay with with a strike and Harry Sullins winner of the first game with a spare. And he's playing that deep inside line, Chris. Harry will line up on the approach somewhere over here where we normally shoot the 10 pin. He'll slide in this area. He'll roll the ball between the fourth and fifth arrows all the way down the lane. It's amazing how deep the line he plays. two pin he went outside that line it's so defined you only have one board to hit without a good angle of attack to the pocket it's very difficult to carry the light hits when you're coming in from the first arrow on the right side you have about 15 boards of angle to get to the back pins from the deep inside line you only have one or two we mentioned the size of the field in that field was last week's winner in Overland Park Kansas Butch Soper he tied for 27th with Joe Hutchison and the winner of the last major uh, tournament in Toledo, PBA National, Pete Weber, he tied for 53rd in this U.S. Open. Strike up shooting in the second. Now Jess Stayrook will take the same type of line, although he creeps much closer to the foul line, only takes about a 13-foot approach and very short, choppy steps, then just kind of muscles that ball through with that powerful left arm. Let's see if he can take the early lead. Strike up. Okay, a big important double. Confidence builder indeed. Let's get a profile view of Jess's stroke. Jess with a five-step delivery, very deliberate in the first two steps. Doesn't even push the ball away to the third step. Normally he'd be out of time, but now he pulls the ball through with that tremendous left arm strength and it allows him to just rip the rack and take an early 11-pin lead. Jess, a carpenter by trade, Chris. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, that left arm has served him well, and it's helped him become a very physical bowler. The pressure on the bowlers are taking a lot more time off the approach in preparation for getting set, as Jess is doing now. here for one of the prestigious tournaments anywhere the United States Open. Jess sends the ball wide, gets all the lift on it. You see the ball deflect a little bit, but drive the five into the six, into the ten, and he has Harry Sollins, who has failed to put together any string of strikes so far, even in his opening victory. As Harry backed up, Harry must reach for a little extra to try to close the ground. <laughs> his first of this our second match Harry who during the 56 games coming to the final had high games of 258 and 257 whereas Stayrook shot a 279 and a 278 so you can make big scores Bo you did well this week I'm proud of you <laughs> thanks Chris a little bit of an upset 41st uh, but a wonderful prize fund I picked up two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars now Harry Sullivan Sullins trying to close the gap that Stayrook has opened of 21 pins. Sullins can make it just 11 with a strike. And instead, a split. Trouble two for Harry for Sullins. Mm. Trouble, Chris. Has to get the ball way over here to the left of the two pin and drive that two pin over into the 10. The four will go back with the ball impacting it. Harry doesn't convert to spare. 
he'll be behind by 33 pins if he gets nine out, more if he gets just eight. Mm -hmm. came back to take out the 10 so it's an open for Harry Sullins at the Cowboy Hall of Fame here in Oklahoma City great examples of Charles Russell the Western artist you're about to see red men's wireless when mules wear diamonds and buffalo hunt a beautiful bronze Russell's magnificent is there some sort of problem Seagram's peach. Well, it, it, it's smooth, like your skin. Wild berries. Luscious, like your lips. Come with me. See, it's, it, it's Seagram's golden uh, sparkles, like your eyes. Anything for world peace. If your car pulls to one side, let Midas check your alignment. At Midas, trained professionals with the latest technology align your car right. You see, we're serious about safety. Hey, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Petunias and Agapanthus? Aga what? Want to know any more? Ask Ace. That's what I do. Ten-foot sections of natural cedar edging are only $4.77 each, and this bonus-size armor all just $3.49. Hey, Ace is a place for me. Holy field, don'ts. Some writers call it the greatest heavyweight fight of the decade. Witness this dramatic battle next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Running way behind our time schedule, so we bowled through in the fourth frame after three in a row. Going now for the sixth pin on the right lane. This stay with San Diego, California. One of the two left-handers, the winner of this game will meet Mike Albee, great champion. Jess Stayrook from a bowling family. His father, a 200 average bowler, who has helped develop Jess's uh, his bowling game. And there's the father and his wife, Kathy Stayrook, who I saw over heading for the beauty shop at Wednesday afternoon. He says, Jess is bowling so well, I might as well get ready for Saturday. So she a prognosticator she was and has been so far. The bowling family, the coach, and there's the protege on the approach with a chance to win his first match today. And left a 5-9, which we don't see that often. Oh, Chris, he sent it wide, and we're seeing all sorts of spares as you see the deep inside line that Jess Stayrook, lefties uh, confronted with the same lane condition as the righties. Jess be going between the fourth and fifth arrows on the right-hand part of the lane. Sends it wide, almost leaves the three, five, six, nine. Gets a great break, breaks it down to the five, nine. Easy spare, he'll maintain a 30-pin lead. Kathy's husband, Jess, looking for his first PBA victory and the first chance to bowl in the Firestone, the final leg of the Triple Crown in bowling. After an open, the frame, Harry Sullins. I hit in a 310. Harry just cannot seem to find the pocket line, has splits coming and going. And as you see the overhead look, Harry Sullins drives through, pulls up a little quickly at the line, stands up on that left leg, doesn't like the result, and cuts right through the middle. He's the 310 baby split. Harry with a harder, shinier bowling ball. Hopefully he can slide that ball to the right of the three pin, have it deflect into the 10, and stay within 30. Well done. A little lesson here in converting splits. Tip of the week today, Nelson. The tip of the week is a wonderful tip. Chris, I think I'll surprise you with that one. All right. We'll show you. And by the way, we're going to record a few after we're off the air. So the people in the Oklahoma area be delighted to come out and watch a few bowling tips of the week being recorded. Now Sullen's trailing by 36 frames. <laughs> now 
that'll help because the strike came in the sixth. But just stay rook who is back up. Spare working. He'll be shooting in the sixth frame. Very deliberate. Uses the full grip, cocks that wrist, urethane bowling ball. Very determined young man. A lot of money at stake. As we look at Kathy Stayrook, earlier we asked her husband what it would mean winning the Open today. Here's what Jess said. Well, right now I'd like to just take it one step at a time and make good shots, best shots I can make. It's the biggest tournament of the year, and I plan on being very tough today. And he is being that here in the second game of the afternoon, meeting Harry Sullins, who won the first game over Tom Kreitz, 198 to 172. 30 pin lead can increase it to 40 with a strike in the seventh. Five. U.S. Open lane conditions. There are no free strikes. Eric, he actually went over the top of that ball, and he doesn't get the pin action. He, when he keeps, keeps his hand underneath the ball, he only gets a lot of lift on the ball and drives right through the pocket. He topped that ball a little bit. It spun too much. Not enough drive on the five pin. Gets a good break that he didn't leave the five, six, ten split. After that reaction, he covers the five pin. We're at the United States Open in Edmond, Oklahoma. Seagram's Cooler is embracing this major event. Ah, Radio Shack. Here it is. A Tandy 1000 SL computer system. IBM PC compatible and sale price for under $9.99. Save $200. Comes complete with color monitor and built-in deskmate software. Word processing, graphics, worksheet... I've never seen one so easy to use. Greetings. Need directions back to your planet? This technology is more advanced than we thought. And we saved $200. Beam it up. Save $200 on the Tandy 1000 SL system. Less than $999 only at Radio Shack. Wherever wheels are rolling, no matter what the load, the name that's known is Firestone. Folks vacation wherever crops are grown. The name that's known is Firestone. Where the rubber meets the road. The best bowlers battle in Baltimore. Five fight to finish first in the Fairlanes Open. It'll be fun. Next Saturday on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour. Harry Sullen's eighth frame. In the seventh, while we were away, he left a 10 marked with a spare. 30 pins separating these two professionals, both of whom are going for the United States Open title. Two remaining bowlers off to our right continue to practice. Next up, Mike Alby and the tournament leader, Jim Pinsack, from the Cleveland area. Dad likes it, and so does his wife. That came in the eighth frame. Just tells me his dad always helps him uh, videotape his game, and they analyze his game, how he performed under pressure with the videotape machine, and one of the great teaching tools we have in all sports, especially in bowling, to get refine your game, get everything down perfect. As you see, one of the 21 pins that are being rolled at on each particular lane, you see 10 standing, 10 waiting to be set and one extra in case one of these boys really cracks it and knocks it out the back end keeps the action moving right along now stay rook with a chance to get one leg towards the semifinal match if he can strike here if he doesn't the match is up for grabs yeah. 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 
Tyler Comfort now with a 40 pin lead. That strike in the ninth. Strike up. Harry Sullins shooting in the ninth now. For Harry Sullins, once a league bowler in Detroit, a fellow named Lou Ansara, one of his teammates talked him into trying the tour, has been quite successful. But in order to have a chance at the $100,000 first prize today, he must strike on the next three balls. That's a big task in a tournament as important as this. There's one of them now, giving him a double. Three more events on our winter tour still remaining next week to the Baltimore Ariel, the Fair Lanes Open, $150,000 event, to be followed by a Windsor Locks, Connecticut return two weeks from today, and then three weeks from today, the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Harry Sullen's 10th frame must strike. He cannot win this match without a strike right here. Chris, that's going to be all she wrote that's for it. Harry Sullins. The best he can do is 195. Just stay rook going at a 227 pace, a potential 247. Just keep behind the foul line, and that's no problem for a top star. And for Harry Sullins, $20,000 for having finished fourth. 280. Mike Albee will be up next, twice PBA national champion. Hottest bowler on the tour right now. Harry Sullins, the best 195. Good performance. <laughs> 195. For Sullins, who shot a 198 and defeating Tom Kreitz is 172. A crossover on the fill ball gets a break knocking down the nine pin, but it's of no avail this late in the match. Jess Stayrook will go on to meet Mike Albee. Okay, here at the United States Open, we have a winner of our second game from San Diego, Jess Stayrook. From Indianapolis, Indiana, Mike Albee, his opponent next. Bo Burton's Bowling Tip of the Week is brought to you by Kellogg's, where you can get a taste for the healthy life. The hand of Mark Roth, often injured, but it has very seldom ever stopped him from competing in a professional bowling tournament. And today's Bowling Tip of the Week will show you his secret and the secret that other pros use to keep going when they have an injury. Let's presume I have an injured thumb. What I would first do is obtain a product we call New Skin. It is a product that will cover the injury and also have some sort of antiseptic value. Put a coat on your thumb. Then place some cotton or gauze over that injured area. Let that dry for a few seconds, then apply a final coat of this New Skin to the gauze and the injured area. When this dries, you will still have a nice, flexible thumb that you can bend and still be able to continue your bowling. Attention, shredded wheat eaters. You've been missing something. Taste, but no more. Kellogg Squares brings you that superlative shredded wheat nutrition with no salt, no fat, no cholesterol. But wait, Kellogg Squares gives you free in every bite. Taste, sweet, delectable fruit in the middle. You might never eat plain old shredded wheat again. Kellogg Squares, shredded wheat with taste, free in every bite. And speaking of taste, now Squares have 35% more raisin. Great taste, free. Now, let Bo help you score even more. You'll also fix problems, improve strategy, and practice smarter with Bo Burton's new bowling video. This video is for you. ABC Sports brings you Bo Burton's instructional video, Score More, just $24.98 plus $3 shipping. Call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. That's 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. It's just a few.
We're ready uh, for our semifinal game after Jess Stayruk of San Diego eliminated Harry Sullins 226 to 195 with seven strikes. So the scores are getting a little higher. We'll see what happens in our third match of the afternoon as they battle to knock these pins down ten at a time, of course. That's behind the scenes. Next week, Fair Lanes Open in Baltimore, Maryland. To be followed two weeks from today, the Greater Hartford Open, Windsor, Locks, Connecticut. So we hope you'll join us for those. And Nelson had a lot of great champions tr trying for the top spot here, including yourself. And we take a look at how they finished six through 24. Very demanding field, Chris. 96 amateurs, 144 pros. The total field, only a 198 average. Edwards, Ringener, Baker, you look for them. U.S. Open champion Ballard, Jaros, Don Janelle, Palumbi, Hanley back bowling well, Dave Ferraro, 300 man Bob Benoit, Gil Slyker, now a house pro in Belt Palmetto, Rowdy Morrow, St. Louis, Dave Arnold really looks sharp, Tony Morisi, Odrobinak 300 this week, Wonderlich, Norm Duke, George Branham, <clears throat> Jimmy Pritz ran out the top 24, Chris, and Pritz would like to say get well to his mother who had a mild heart attack. Okay, and our statistician Palmer, Fogren finishing 25th. Don't forget, come to Persimmon Hill in Oklahoma City and visit the Cowboy Hall of Fame where you get to relive uh, things that happened out west. Earlier we saw Farney and Bierstadt. Now we have a few minutes to show you the magnificent work of Charles M. Russell and also the work of legendary Frederick Remington. Over 300,000 visitors come each year to the Cowboy Hall of Fame. We'll be back for the semifinal game of the United States Open after this. Last year, Ebonite took you to a new plateau of excellence on Oily Lane with the Thunderbolt. Now the Thunder rolls on with the new Thunderbolt MD for medium to dry lanes. The same devastating power core and an exclusive new MD cover that makes it hunt down the pocket and hit harder with less deflection on medium to dry lane. Make some thunder of your own. Ask your pro about the Thunderbolt MD from Ebonite. The road is filled with all kinds of surprises Whoa. and hazards. Hey! That's why if you want a smooth, comfortable ride... Boy, do I need a smooth, comfortable ride. Get a set of Monroe Gasmatic Shocks or Struts. They'll give you the best ride ever, guaranteed. They're so good. Hey, great ride. They'll even help you <laughs> handle the curve. <laughs> no wonder America rides Monroe shocks and struts. Oh, yeah. Burger King presents the world's first scratch and sniff commercial. Just scratch the dot and you'll start to sniff everything you see. Come on, scratch the dot. Now, can't you smell that beef patty flame broiling? The bun, toasted golden brown. Onion, finger still on that dot. Crisp lettuce, juicy tomato. Now, breathe in. You just had a scratch and sniff whopper. Now, take your finger off the dot and you'll know where to get a real whopper. At Burger King. In the long format, they bowl 56 games, coming to the final five. We now move into the semifinal game, where many-time champion Mike Albee, winner of 16, two of them this year, is cleaning off that, well, not so gleaming bowling ball. It's the one Mike is using here. Mike using a high surface friction bowling ball. He's trying to get that little ball to bite in the center of the lane and try play some pretty good hook to at least get some angle attack on the one-two pocket. And that's the kind of breaks, of course, you need as you go along in a championship format. And here is Jess Stayrook, the other left-hander, who had a 226 to Harry Sullen's 195 score to get to this point. The loser of this game will get $30,000, but the winner has a chance to go for a hundred grand. And the high hit leaves the 2-7. Chris, the psychology of match play. Stay Rook lost to Albee last night. The second position 
when Stayrook left a disastrous 4, 6, 7, 10 on the final ball of the tournament, the 56th game, 10th frame. All that Stayrook needed was a spare. He left a split, left the door open for Albie to move in the second position, and it looks like that luck has carried over so far today. A little psychological ed edge in the Albie camp. Stayrook cross lane needs to deflect the ball from the two pin into the seven. Wow, what a break. And that's what they need, as we pointed out earlier. Watch the ball drive the two pin straight back. It'll hit off the kickback, which is 29 inches past the back pin. It'll come back, bounce off the ball, deflect into the base of the seven. What a terrific, terrific break at, a, at an opportune time. And if he can go all the way, he'll want to gild that two pin, won't he? Mm. Well, many times when a player makes a 7 10 split or something, the pin actually does bounce off the top of the bowling ball. A terrific break. Let's see if it charges the batteries of Jess Stayrook. I love it, the three. Jess, who has always been a very clean type of player. He never attacks with a lot of strikes. He always keeps the ball well to the left. Doesn't have much of a tendency to pull the ball to the right of the head pin. Fills frames, and that's the kind of tournament that favors his game. But he has his hands full with probably the hottest bowler in bowling today, Mike Albee. Tess Stayrook, who led the tournament after the second, third, fourth, and six rounds, but then had to bowl the eventual tournament leader, Jim Pensack. And then Albee got very hot last night, and here he is, open with the strike, shooting in the second frame from the number two position. And last night he had a few of those Brooklyn's as we look at Tommy Albee. Their expectant parents come October. When you're on a roll, it all goes properly. Mike Albee just quit on that ball. It crosses all the way over to the 1-3 pocket. A tremendous break. He has an 11-pin lead. Vander Holyfield, the Olympic medalist, and a great heavyweight, Michael Dokes, coming after a 33-month layoff. Fight of the decade, really, among the heavyweights, plus World Cup speed skating on Wide World, which follows us. See if Albee can take advantage of that break, jump to an early 21-pin lead. And now a seven pin. Some discussion of, of a problem back there in the pin area, Chris, and I think what Albee was discussing was that there was a pin in the left rear of the pit behind it was distracting him. It really was out of play. If a pin happens to be laying in the channel, you cannot make a delivery. It becomes uh, uh, incorrect or illegal delivery, and you really, if you touch or impact any part of that pin, you get zero for that particular shot. No threat of that from Albee as he tries to make the seven. I'll be opening with a double marking the spare in the third in our semifinal match with a split conversion in the first and a phenomenal spare in the second. Trailing by 10, here is Jess Stayrook. Never worse than fifth. That's consistency. First strike of this game, he had seven in his victory over Harry Sullins to shoot at 226. Chris, as you mentioned, never lower than fifth. He's the only player that never dropped out of the top five the whole week. Just bowled eight games on Monday, eight more on Tuesday, eight more on Wednesday, 16 games, eight on Thursday and 16 more on Friday and qualified the number three position right now. That's where he sits and if he can strike, he will even the match fourth frame. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about breaks. This is a semifinal of breaks. 
Watch the action of a third pin on the right-hand part of your screen, the three pin. The three pin, there it is in the right-hand channel. It drifts in, knocks out the six and 10. The six pin rolls around, knocks out the four. A tr two tremendous breaks in four frames for Jeff Stayrook, and he evens the match. Well, we can take a long, deep breath after that to return for more of the semifinal in the U.S. Open. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it with Son of a Gun from STP. Shoot the dash, seats, tires, and roof. Son of a Gun protected. Man, what a difference. The product. The vehicles. The testing grounds. The results. STP oil treatment is the edge. Is there some sort of problem? Sigrum's peach. Well, it, it, it's smooth, like your skin. Violet berries. Luscious, like your lips. Come with me. See, it's, it, it's Sigrum's golden uh, sparkles, like your eyes. Anything for world peace. A television classic returns. Host Kurt Gowdy hunts with Walter Payton and learns about dolphins with Matt Biondi. It's the American Sportsman, tomorrow on ABC Sports. To tie the match. While we were away and we're running way behind our allotted 90-minute time segment, Mike Albee, um, with a spur up, doubled. So now both professionals. Stay Rook with three in a row to even the match, and he'll move to the left lane. The winner to meet Jim Pensack. This is Vince Partridge, Vice President of Promotions and Marketing, Seagram's Coolers, and his company has embraced the Bowling Proprietors Association of America's United States Open the last three years. Paid out over one and a half million dollars in prize money. Now, Stay Rook match even five frames can take the lead with a strike. I guess you could say the only thing certain in this semifinal match is that there will be a left-hander in the final. That's this for sure. Incredible bowling. Watch the four pin, the second pin on the left-hand part of your screen. It lays in the gutter, knocks out the seven. Chris, from that inside line, that's a 10 to one shot of that ever happening. Stayrook has had all the good breaks he could possibly ever want. And he has a 10 pin lead through six frames, but Albee can even it here in the sixth. Crossing over and matching his opponent. We asked Mike Albee, who's won two PBA Nationals, what winning the Open would mean to him. The U.S. Open being a major means a lot, and I don't have that title, and it's been nine years since I've had a chance to do that. So hopefully today we can go out there and win it. All right. Right to the point, this young man from Indianapolis, where the U.S. Open will be contested next year. Four terrific breaks, two by each player in the first six frames. It's all even now. It's four frames for the big bucks and a chance at the title. Mike leaving a seven pin. That shot was so similar to what Jace Jess Stavro carried there in the sixth frame to even the match. Mike Albee not getting the same break, the four pin not carrying out, and the machine didn't even recognize it, wiped off the seven pin. It'll have to be reset. The fellow back there knocking down the pins, the, the magical iron arm, and it's not even working properly. <laughs> Needs to handset the seven pin. Well, tomorrow ABC Sports will showcase college basketball's brightest stars as Mercedes-Benz presents the Basketball Writers Player of the Year Awards. It's live except on the West Coast. That's tomorrow on ABC Sports. Full weekend here, ABC Sports. Wide World follows us today. Also tomorrow, special return of American Sportsman with our friend Kurt Gowdy hosting it. Albee for the seven pin would trail Bio just one pin with a conversion. Perfect. This is a semifinal match. 
We're in the Oklahoma City area, the Cowboy Hall of Fame, and James Earl Frazier, one of the sculptors, into the trail is also seen here. Wherever wheels are rolling, no matter what the load, the name that's known is Firestone. Where the rubber meets the road, wherever folks vacation, wherever crops are grown, the name that's known is Firestone. Where the rubber meets the road, I used pressure-treated lumber, and I still have $800 in water damage. How come? Even treated wood needs Thompson's water seal protection. This patio was supposed to last for years. Now I have $1,200 in damage. Why? Your concrete wasn't protected with Thompson's water seal. Thompson's penetrates into wood, brick, or concrete to form a barrier water can't get past, even when driven by 98-mile-per-hour winds. Let it rain. This time I use Thompson's, a great defense against repair expense. Thompson's, the first name in lasting protection. The best bowlers battle in Baltimore. Five fight to finish first in the Fairlanes Open. It'll be fun. Next Saturday on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour. Eighth frame, just stay rook. This time leaving a three while we're away in the seventh frame, he left the four six and went for it all out as a matter of fact. And here's Right through the middle, Chris, the 4-6, mm -hmm. he was, had a one-pin lead at this point. Then he went for the four-pin, tried to bounce it out into the six, not to be. Now trails by 13 pins through seven frames. Has a simple pin spare here, but Albee with a couple of good breaks. Stay with, with a couple of good breaks. Finally got the bad break, and it's Albee's lead. Remember, Harry Sullins won our first match of the afternoon over Tom Kreitz, 198 to 172. Then the man at whom we're looking, Jeff Stayroop, defeated Harry Sullins, 226 to 195. And now Mike Albee in his first match, the semifinal game, with the lead, as Bo told you, and getting late. Winner to go into the final, where the two will go for 155,000. hit and it's the two four seven. I'll be the count loss so important because it drops his lead from 13 down to 10 and puts Stayrook in a position where a double would even the match. As you see the hands of Tammy Alby. Glad that Mike has just only the two four and seven spare but she knows after watching this tournament for seven days this is no gimme. Needs this to keep in the lead. Mike with back-to-back -back wins this year. The last left-hander to do it was Earl Anthony in 1981. Just. I bet the hair on the back of his neck stood up a bit on that one. Well, when he let it go, he just doesn't really know where it's going. The two, four, and seven, Mike tried to get the ball to the left of the two pin, and it just hooked immediately when it left his hand. He gets a terrific break once again. Hits the two pin on the outside, drives it in the four seven. And now as we come down to the, the pay dirt frames, the ninth and tenth frames to see who goes into the championship match for one hundred thousand dollars. It's all be by ten. Last week, uh, Mike. Took off time to nut bowl in the King Louis Open. Seven pin ninth frame. Mike Albee, a couple of seven pins, and in critical situations, he has made the seven pin in the last few years. He has changed his style of spare shooting. He goes with this more of a straight ball for the seven pin. Now he's going to move over here, almost where he throws his strike ball, and come straight across the lane into the seven pin. Look at that position. I hope his ball goes a little straighter than my line. Well, you're almost a Russell or a Remington or a Farney or Deerstaff. <laughs> the moment of truth for these two players. If Jess Stayrook could throw two strikes, ninth and tenth frames, he would have the lead. He 
could shut out his opponent as the graphic shows. Four strikes, but after watching almost three games in the championship round, four strikes are very unlikely. And Bo, we can think about this difference between winning and losing this game. 70,000 possibility. And now Jess with a seven. The same strategy must be used by Jess Stayrook. And you know, in a position like this, Chris, you cannot be disappointed with one particular shot. This four pin flying over the top of the seven. Stayrook has to concentrate on this one shot, especially under pressure, especially in the big tournaments. Don't think of the whole scope of the game. Think of one frame, one shot at a time as Kathy Stayrook is trying to root that seven pin down. All right. Now for both into the tenth frame, semi-final game, continuing to warm up, and he's strong enough to bowl all day long. The tournament leader, Jim Pensack. The big guy standing by to see which man will be his opponent. For just stay rook, pressure situation, something that all be has faced many times. Uncharted territory for stay rook. As Chris said, if he can win this game, he has a chance for $70,000 by winning the final. If not, he has to settle for 30. Come on, Jess. Seemed like less speed, but a perfect pocket hit. Jess's best finish coming into this event was a fourth. You think Jess Stayrook isn't into this match? He didn't even know that was a 10th frame. And that is a perfect match game demeanor in a championship round to take it one ball at a time. Somebody will tell you if it's a 10th frame. Kathy Stabrook, what can I do? She was, I was talking to her before the telecast. She says, I'm so nervous, I don't know what to do. The two wives. Poof. See, Tammy's saying, what are you gonna do with your 70 grand? <laughs> Needs this strike to even the match. performance by a non-winner. Chris, I could see his legs shaking, his arms shaking, even his earlobe shaking. He's so nervous and pumped up. That man's heartbeat has to be up around the 180 beats per minute. We have a setup for a tie right now. Albee, who is a proven, proven quality in these situations. Remember how he threw four strikes to win the Atlantic City Tournament just a month ago. Has no fear of performing under pressure. For just stay rook, a strike here will force Albie to strike and spare. We we'll face also to tie or to throw two strikes to win. Big, big shot. 12th frame. One more. Just did not come up. A 3 7, a 2 22 for Jess. Now he'll just have to wait along with his wife, Kathy. Now, what do you do if you're Mike Albee? On this particular lane, he's had two crossover strikes. Both could have been splits. He went right through the nose for the 2-4-7, avoided the split in the eighth frame, and now he needs 19 pins to win the match. You need to reach back for your Sunday punch. One ball, you got to put it all in the shot. Like an Evander Holyfield left hook or Michael Doakes straight right hand. Albie, what a terrific pressure shot. He has proved it week after week, especially here in the 1989 season. Nine pins on two balls to win the match. Mm. You heard Mike say, you bet. And you can bet your money that he'll bowl well in the final game against the tournament leader, Jim Pensack. That's for the championship. Nature's light. Bathing fields of grain, enriching full, fresh hops. 
giving life to sparkling streams, nourishing all the natural things that go into making Bud Light. The light beer that's beechwood aged for a clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. What do I know about gardening? Big rake, little rake. Want to know any more? Ask Ace. That's what I do. These Ace long handle shovels, just $5.77 each. And get cotton gloves free with these leather gloves, only $3.88. Hey, Ace is a place for me. If your car pulls to one side, let Midas check your alignment. At Midas, trained professionals with the latest technology align your car right. You see, we're serious about safety. Hey, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. On the next Monday Mystery Movie, there's love in the air and murder between the sheets. We had great sex. You see why I'm so puzzled about this? Columbo, Monday. It's April. The income tax deadline is almost here. Do you have time to do this for us? Like that? And they were, of course. They said, of course we have time. We're never too busy to help you. I file right at the deadline. Well, they might be busy, but never too busy to take care of you. Don't face the tax deadline alone. Our people are working extra hours to get you the maximum refund you're entitled to. I'll let H&R Block have the headache. H&R Block now, because it's not too late to go for the maximum refund you're entitled to. Don't settle for less. Visit the ProEdge team, your AMF representatives, during the American Bowling Congress Nationals at the Century 2 Expo Hall. Tom Lash Lasko, a 15-year touring professional, currently the testing consultant for the AMF staff of champions, and his team will provide you with the latest in high-tech services, complimentary grip evaluation and track analysis, static dynamic balance layouts, precision fitting, custom drilling, plus the complete line of AMF products. Keep the edge with ProEdge. The difference is caring. Christy Deer, Cake Sports. Hi, I'm Frank Gifford, and coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the network premiere of one of the most exciting fights in years. Heavyweights Evander Holyfield and Michael Dokes square off with an eye towards the heavyweight crowd. And Holyfield joins us in our studio to talk about that fight and the future. Plus, from Holland, the World Cup Speed Skating Finals, featuring U.S. Olympians Dan Jansen and Bonnie Blair. It's all just ahead of 4.30 Eastern time, right here on Wide World of Sports. Right now, let's go back to Chris Schenkel, more bowling. All right, thank you very much, Frank. And here in Edmond, Oklahoma, three games, three matches. Joining and making it a threesome in the studio with Dan Deardorff and Alex Wallow will be Evander Holyfield. Be interesting to hear his comments on his fight. Okay, we go into the final match now. Mike Albee goes against a non-winner, a man who's won less than $1,000 this year, Jim Pensack, capacity crowd here in Edmond, Oklahoma, for this, the Seagram's Coolers third United States Open. There, here in Oklahoma, there are 36 Indian tribes. This is the son of the most famous of the Indian athletes, Jim Thorpe. This is Jack Thorpe chief of the Sack and Fox for seven years in Stroud, Oklahoma. And uh, we'd hoped to have a chance to interview him because Jim Thorpe could shoot in the 70s in golf. He would, could average 200 in bowling to go along with his Olympic gold medals in 1912. And he was the pillar of, of course, pro football, Jack Thorpe. And there you see Richard Altman, who is a proprietor here. And what a tremendous host, what a tremendous uh, entrepreneur in this area. Chris, as we set up the championship match, two completely different styles. The cerebral, very secure Mike Albee going to start the match on the left, and the man who is just determined, one of the strongest physically individuals we have on a professional bowlers tour, Jim Pensack, who absolutely told me he will not lose this match, and yet he's never bowled for a title. Let's see what happens. So here is Albee, the hockey fan. The photography fan, 16 titles, going for his third major. That's the way to greet your opponent here in match play. A little psyching can always help. Boy, you know him, Chris. Uh, Mike Albee, he's a bunch of energy waiting to happen inside. He's trying to lull Jim Pensack to sleep with that low profile start. But this young man says, I'm throwing my game. Watch this style. As strong physically and as strong with that bowling ball and as determined as anybody I've ever seen in the number one position. And the Buckeye 
guy from Richmond Heights Ohio a suburb of Cleveland lets his presence be known in a dramatic fashion the profile of leverage and power five step delivery in a tremendously strong body high back swing open hand watch that pivot foot push down in slotting from that deep inside angle lets those tremendously powerful legs drive underneath and you just cannot roll it any better than that this is going to be a war Jim Pensek attacking Mike Albee the experienced better just one game and you're assured of 55,000 the winner to get 100. Leaving a 10 pin on the left lane. 5'10, 195 powerful pounds. 43rd at the AC Delco Classic in Torrance. Cross lane changing to a slicker surface bowling ball to cut down the hook, and he'll use a ball speed up in the mid 20s. And then lost it. Channel shot and an open frame for the tournament leader. Chris, it's amazing how the PBA has put a, such a premium on accuracy in this particular tournament. On a normal lane condition where the outside boards are a little dry, that ball would have come back, ticked the 10 pin for Jim Pensack. Made a little mistake, sent it wide, and it has really given Albie an early opening championship game. Avoided the split and left the two. Everything going Albie's way. Now there's a, a minimum of four seconds. One, two, three, four before the pin setter can touch a pin. These particular set bowling center gives you a lot more time. Almost six or seven seconds on that particular shot and Albie takes advantage of that break ending up with an easy spare instead of a difficult two seven split. Just one game now. Total of 155,000. Nelson and I view it this way as you have a camera shot between us going down to the championship pair. Lanes 27 and 28 from behind. We have just, you know, the wonderful vantage point and with our monitors. We see it as you do at home. And then, of course, with the naked eye. Third frame. Right back to the strike in the third for Albi. Albi close, carefully preparing his shoes, the first thing he does out. And when you see his footwork, where he's nice and solid at the line, you know he's in rhythm. Jim Pensek not thinking about any of those things. He's a strike bowler, and if he can get hot here, he'll push Albi to the limits. In match play, Albi did defeat Pensek. Six, seven for Pensac on the right lane. As often happens as Jim Pensac's wife Liz looks on, when you miss a simple spare, you often follow it by a split. All he has to do is get the ball over here in the four seven zone and try to bounce one of those pins out into the six, six pin, and he'll go with maximum speed. Needs a good break right here. We've asked all five about what it would mean winning the U.S. Open. This is how Jim feels. I'll tell you, the money would be nice, and uh, the title is what I'm gunning for. I'd really like to bowl in the Firestone Tournament of Champions in a couple weeks. Succinct answer, but right now he's in arrears by 23. Must throw strikes on a very demanding lane condition in an uncompromising championship game. Six television appearance for Jim, his first here in 89. Last TV, he was fifth in the AC Delco Classic. 
It's time to welcome spring with a fresh coat of beautiful color during spring spruce ups at True Value Hardware Stores, where True Test Easy Care Acrylic Latex Paint starts at just $10.98 a gallon. Choose velvety flat finish, scrubbable flat enamel for a low sheen look, scrubbable semi gloss for high traffic areas, and get a high gloss finish with latex gloss enamel. Look for spatter resistant Easy Care formulas at participating True Value Hardware Stores and home centers. Attention, shredded wheat eaters. You've been missing something. Taste, but no more. Kellogg Squares brings you that superlative shredded wheat nutrition with no salt, no fat, no cholesterol. But wait, Kellogg Squares gives you free in every bite. Taste, sweet, delectable fruit in the middle. You might never eat plain old shredded wheat again. Kellogg Squares, shredded wheat with taste, free in every bite. And speaking of taste, now Squares have 35% more raisin. Great taste, free. In the fourth frame of this championship match, Mike Albee left the 2-7, and this is what happened. Chris, he didn't send the ball wide enough. It hooks right into the two-pin, doesn't give himself any chance to convert the seven, and he has put Jim Pensek back in the match. Albee is really kind of lost. He didn't really bowl that 234 game. He clutched it out in the 10th, took advantage of a couple of breaks in that semifinal against Stayrook, and now the match is on. As the professionals so often do, bouncing back with a strike following an error. But 11 pins now, and he can cut it to one. Jim Pensack. You bowlers at home, put yourself in either one of these players' shoes. Jim Pensack never being there before. He kind of knows where the pocket is, but he doesn't know what to expect from Albie. He doesn't know what to expect from himself. And right now, with a strike in the fifth frame, he'd be only one pin behind with five frames to go. And he crossed over. Just one pin. Now be moving to the left side. There's Albie working on those shoes, making absolutely sure that he is prepared for the next shot. If you happen to slip on conditions where accuracy is so demanding as these lane conditions, the shot is finished. Careful preparation by Albie. All excitement for Pensek. Now it's up to him right now to take advantage of that break, Chris. Albie knows that Pensek got the break. Now Pensek must capitalize. Sliding by and leaving the bucket. The two, four, five, and eight. Another critical situation for Pensek. A little extra speed, sends the ball wide. You see it trying to bite, trying to bite. But there's lane conditioner down on that lane surface. And when you send it aboard wide, you pay the penalty, a tough spare. And for Pensec, a conversion here will still keep him close, just five pins. Consistency this week. Jim Pensack. Watch this break. The two pin goes to the sideboard. The ball has already missed the eight pin and comes back. Chris, I would say that only happens one out of five or six times. Everything going right. You can see the perspiration rolling down Pensack's face. You can see the apprehension on Albies. Strike up. Mike is back to a 15 pin lead. This crowd loving the United States Open. Albee with that dropped left shoulder pushes the ball outside, then takes it inside, then drops that knee into the shot, very low. And then a tremendous shot here. He just kind of pushes the ball to the target, doesn't try to overpower the pins, knowing that he may not get another opportunity to take a lead this big in the match. His experience paid off in the sixth frame. He can put Pensect in real trouble here in the seventh. Coming up next, even though we're running late, Wide World of Sports, Holyfield, Dokes World Speed Skating Cup Finals. And Mike left the 10 pin on the left lane. Albee with that 15 pin lead is not going to hit the nose. He will keep every ball light. You cannot attack at this point unless you're forced to. Here's Albee sending it wide, goes into the one-two zone. 
Three pin comes off the sideboard, takes out the five and six. Simple spare, Albie will pike the big hook across the lane. And with three frames to go for Albie with this conversion, he lead by 14. So Mike marking with a spare after a double 14 pin lead going against Jim Pensack. The final game of the U.S. Open will be back. John Oliver on the Seagram's Cooters U.S. Open. It was obvious to us uh, that we wanted to be where, uh, where people are. And in America, bowling is the most popular participation sport. Uh, so that made it pretty obvious that, that bowling and Seagram's Coolers ought to go together. And uh, we're tremendously proud to be a sponsor of the Seagram's Coolers U.S. Open. Uh, it's the crown jewel of bowling's triple crown. And we look forward to supporting bowling for many years to come. Seagram's Coolers. This is where the fun starts. In every town in America, there's always one place that does a little bit better job of fixing your car. And it seems the things they all have in common are great mechanics, great service, and Napa parts. Well, spring is here. And to make sure your car takes the change of seasons in perfect stride, stop by your Napa Auto Care Center now for our spring specials. Look for the sign of quality car care. Napa. There's a rough road ahead with no end in sight. Quaker State engines don't know when to quit. Quaker State is quality engineered to exceed every single American, European, and Japanese car maker's U.S. requirements for maximum engine protection. So pistons are protected from friction mile after mile. Valves are protected from wear year in, year out. That's why Quaker State engines run strong and run long. Quaker State engines don't know when to quit. The big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. While we were away with a spare up in the seventh frame, a crossover strike. Then in the eighth, leaving the six seven. Has to go for it. <laughs> Devastating open frame. Frame number eight. Now Albie. Pensex sends it wide, but once again, that extra lubricity on the outside boards doesn't allow the ball to break. Slides by. He has 129 through eight frames. The door is wide open for Albie to walk in, but he must stay clean. No open frames. And the always much needed break on the eighth pin. For Mike Albee, who major titles are important part of his lifetime career game plan here on the PBA Tour, he has two national championships to his credit. He is now on the threshold of winning the U.S. Open. And with a strike on this ball, he could close the door on Jim Pensick. And the heavyweight fight next on Wide World, Holyfield, Dokes, World Cup speed skating finals. Strike, it's over. If he gets anything less, Pensek can still win. And he does have anything less with a 6-10. That just woke up Jim Pensek. He almost jumped out of his seat. He looked at the scoreboard. He says, I have room for two 189 with four strikes. I'll be going at a 197 pace. I'll be would have to convert to spare and mark in the 10th. Ball's getting heavy, heavier. $155,000, these two. The crowd just as tense. Look at this. Hmm. Woo! And Mike had an anxious moment at the line. Mike Alba, usually the unflappable one on a simple spare, the pressure of the U.S. Open, almost let it slide by. But he's in the driver's seat. Pensek must throw strikes or Albie will win the U.S. Open sitting on the bench. Right now, he has to do it. Still so much power left in that professional bowler from Richmond Heights, Ohio, Cleveland area. The two wives with the pressure. Tammy Albee on the left, Liz Pensek on the right, and her husband absolutely must strike on the next two balls. If Jim Pensek does not throw a strike here on the first ball in the 10th, 
or his second shot in the 11th, Mike Albee is the winner. Albee still has a chance of Pensec strikes. Jim Pansack can't look back at any of the other 56 games he rolled to lead this tournament. He has to look to this one ball because if he does not strike, he cannot win. If he strikes, he still has a chance. 100,000 to the winner, 55,000. And for Jim Pensack, a victory would mean a three year entry into the Firestone Tournament of Champions. He is not eligible at this point. Dejected, Chris. He sent it wide. He is going to end up with a 178 game. Mike Albee. All he has to do is stay behind the foul line. And sort of prophetic. It's a two pin, and that's where he'll finish. But $55,000. His biggest earnings. Last year, 34,000. Jim Pensack, 29-year-old pro from Richmond Heights, Ohio. U.S. Open will be at Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis next year. Cool. That's a winner. The winner, Mike Albee, won his third major. Chief Lipinski, the executive director of the BPA, will come out with a blazer, Don Hillman. The BPAA president will come out with a check. Vince Partridge, who's Seagram Cooler's vice president of promotion and marketing, will be out there with the trophy for Mike Albee, his 17th PBA title. Congratulations. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, heavyweights Evander Holyfield and Michael Dokes battle it out. Plus, the World Cup speed skating finals. The Professional Bowlers Tour has been brought to you by Seagram's Coolers. This is where the fun starts. By Firestone, the name that's known as Firestone, where the rubber meets the road. And by First Brands Corporation, makers of STP Son of a Gun Protected. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. One day, I died and went to Thanksgiving. She saved his life. Now, can he save her? MacGyver. Then, on the Monday Mystery Movie, there's love in the air and murder between the sheets. We had great sex. You see why I'm so puzzled about this? Columbo, Monday. Pella presents the difference between ordinary windows and windowscaping. Windows. Windowscaping. Windows. Windowscaping. If you like what you see, talk to the windowscaping experts only at your Pella window store. For a free booklet of windowscaping ideas, visit the Pella window stores at these locations or check the listing in the Feist Area Direct. Today's bowling tip brought to you by Gold Pin Fun Centers. If I could tell you how to keep from leaving a 10 pin, I'd be rich, and I'm not. You can leave a 10 pin with too strong a hit or too light a hit. The key is deciding which one is which. If you leave a four pin, the ball was too hard, finished too, too strong. If you leave a five or a seven, the ball finished too weak. Adjust accordingly. Too strong, you move to the left. Too weak, you move to the right. The main thing, make an adjustment of some kind. Astonishing truth revealed. World leaders love to rock and roll.